Welcome to my Wednesday market meeting using the live system. I am Sagar Nandi. I am the designer and developer of Q systems and techniques. I used to work in IT. I retired several years ago. I mostly worked in Singapore. Nowadays, I am living in Thailand. I trade stocks and stock options, primarily in the USA market and sometimes in the global markets as well. This is my email ID, tradingprofitably at gmail.com. I regularly share stock and market analysis in my traders forum, sagarnandi.com. Also share analysis, live analysis on the Twitter page, Sagar Nandi and YouTube channel, tradingprofitably.com. All these channels are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Before I begin, let me go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will look at the global markets as well as the USA market, market level analysis. And then I will try to identify trading opportunities using live market. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me start with the live system. I begin the global markets analysis with the Australian index, AXJO. I am looking at it using the weekly backdrop chart template and the daily hop on or entry chart template. Together, I call this at a glance template because using this template, you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, after being bullish cyan for several weeks, this week's candle color turned magenta, that is bearish, and the shape also turned bearish. There is a memory support nearby, especially if that support is broken, then you may be cautious with your long positions. In the daily chart, when price was at this point, displayed the bullish headwind, I had mentioned that the likely move from there was upward. That came true. It came right from the lower boundary to the upper boundary. Then it formed a triangle pattern bound by the red resistance memory trend line and green support memory trend line. These are automatically drawn smart trend lines. Today, it broke out of the triangle pattern downward. The traffic light candle color turned red, flow candle color turned magenta, that is bearish, and the shape is also bearish. The daily memory support at this price level is broken. That is a signal to exit any long position you might have in AXJO. If the downfall continues, you may look for a shorting opportunity in the underlying stocks. If you are happy to take a breakout trade, then today AXJO gave a breakout short setup. This is not a time where you may want to take long position in AXJO. AXJO, Australian market, turned bearish today at least for swing trading purpose. China market was closed today. Let's have a look at the index, see 
SI300. It was closed today. It was closed yesterday also. Before that, it started to decline in the weekly chart. The weekly backdrop candle color is magenta. Shape is also bearish now. In the daily, it dropped from the upper boundary. It has already dropped somewhat from the recent high. Therefore, even if it is dropping, we are not going to initiate a short position now. There is a memory support trend line nearby. If that is broken, then you may be extra cautious about any long position you may have. Let's look at the Hong Kong market. Hong Kong market also started to decline, not as bearish as China market as of today because the weekly backdrop color is neutral, not bearish, and the daily traffic light candle color is also neutral, yellow, not bearish. It is inside a wide triangle pattern bound by resistance memory and support memory. You may not want to take any trade while Hang Seng Index is right in the middle of the triangle pattern. How to trade the triangle pattern? If price goes up and reverses from the memory resistance line, you may look for a shorting opportunity. Or if price comes down to the support memory trend line, bounces up from there, you may look for a long opportunity at that time. Now it is in the middle of the triangle pattern, middle of the support and resistance, and you may avoid taking any swing trade, directional swing trade. India market was also closed today. That is India's Nifty 50 index. As of yesterday, after hitting the memory resistance, price declined a little bit. The backdrop candle color is still remaining cyan. The traffic light candle color has turned bearish. In the previous webinar, I mentioned that because the backdrop color is bullish, I'm not going to look for any shorting opportunity. Instead, if price could go up, break out of this memory resistance, then it would probably give a cyan color candle that could be taken as a breakout long signal. Right now, there is no trade setup in Nifty 50. Let's look at FTSE index and for that, I will go to live system, go online on Metastock. I'm using Q Global on Metastock. still connecting. Okay, let me skip FTSE. Let me, okay, it's connected now. Let's have a look at FTSE. Using real-time data. Sometimes when I run the webinar, it's slower than usual. Please bear with me. Very bearish, isn't it? Instantly we can see. In the weekly chart, the backdrop candle color was bullish for four weeks. This week, it is falling sharply. The Weekly candle shape color both are bearish and daily is also very bearish, falling sharply today. Both in the daily and weekly, it is hitting trend line support. If those supports are broken, you may be even more careful about any long position you may be holding. It is certainly looking bearish, barring the memory support line. We looked at all the global markets, Australia, China, Hong Kong, India. 
and UK. None of the indices are looking bullish. They are starting to drop from the recent swing highs. Is that true for the USA market also? Let's have a look at the USA market using ETFs. Let's start with S&P 500 index SPY. Okay, let me use Q Elite on registration to speed it up. Let's look at S&P 500 SPY using the weekly daily at a glance template. When price came to the high point, at that time I mentioned that I was not going to take any long trade because in the daily it came near watermark resistance and also displayed a bearish headwind signal. I shared it. I shared that analysis using live market. That was very useful now looking back, isn't it? Because price fell sharply from there. Once again, the bearish headwind signal could alert you about impending reversal point. At the right edge, the backdrop candle color and shape both are very bearish in the weekly chart. It is breaking the memory support also in weekly. In the daily, it is at memory support. If that also breaks today or tomorrow, you may be extra careful about any long position you may have. SPY, S&P 500 ETF is certainly looking bearish. NASDAQ, ETF, QQQ. This is also breaking the weekly memory trend line support. The backdrop color is bearish, shape in the weekly chart is bearish. In the daily, it displayed a bearish headwind again near the recent swing high, almost at the very top. From there, it fell sharply. Daily is right at the memory support. If that is broken, you may be extra cautious. When could you start to take short trade? You could start to take short trade when the bearish headwind came and price started to fall. One technique many traders use is to look at the bearish headwind and trade it using short call vertical, putting the short leg just outside the recent high. That turned out to be very profitable. You could take a similar trade in SPY and you could take a similar trade in IWM also. Another technique is to Watch the first bearish headwind, then see if price can go down, recover a little bit and go down again. Give the first magenta color candle and take a shot when the first magenta color candle comes, putting stop just above the recent high. That swing trade, short trade is also very profitable by now. These are different techniques you may use to take trades after the headwind signal appears. Both SPY, QQQ are bearish. What about DIA? Also bearish. Weekly backdrop, shape, color, both are bearish. Daily is falling sharply at the memory support line. There is a chance it will bounce from the memory support in daily as well as weekly. If it breaks down, you may be extra cautious. If it bounces up, you are not going to probably look for a long trade immediately because it fell very sharply. You may be cautious before taking any long trade. IWM, Russell 2000 ETF, it used to be the weakest of the four market ETFs. When it was outperforming the others on this week, the relative performance tilted up. I shorted it right at the top, looking at very high activity, the memory resistance in weekly and daily using short call vertical, putting the short leg just at the memory resistance. That turned out to be very profitable. I also took several trades along the way using intraday charts in the bearish direction. All of them turned out to be very profitable. 
the market is certainly looking bearish. That is the highest level of analysis. When the market is bearish, you are better off looking for shorting opportunities. I regularly share my trading ideas in the traders forum. If you look at the recent trade ideas for the USA market, they are more on the short side than on the long side. That shows that I am able to start taking bearish trades probably somewhat or well ahead of others. One of the trades that I shared was on AXP. Let's have a look at that trade. Twenty-two days ago, that's almost one month ago, isn't it? Almost one month, three weeks ago. I shared a post, a comparison of American Express, MasterCard, and Visa. As is typical in all my posts, I shared the 360 degrees analysis, that is the industry, fundamental, and technical analysis. 22 days ago, this is how the fundamental and PR analysis looked. In terms of valuation, all the three stocks were overvalued. All the three stocks had positive earnings growth in the yearly periods. In fact, for all the three yearly periods. However, AXP was the weakest one among three. That is what I wanted to present. And if we looked at proximity to 52 week high, even before opening the chart, you could see that relative to 52 week high, AXP was starting to go down before the two other stocks, Visa and MasterCard. So I concluded from this peer analysis that AXP was relatively weaker than MasterCard and Visa. Then I looked at their weekly charts using the Q backdrop template. I noticed American Express displayed a bearish headwind. So did MasterCard, so did Visa. And as of that time, the backdrop candle color in the weekly charts all were bearish. Therefore, I could start to look for a shorting opportunity at or near the very top in these three stocks. Which one would I choose? I would choose AXP because fundamentally it was weaker than MasterCard and Visa. And also technically you could see that it was already starting to go down before MasterCard and Visa. Then I looked at their daily charts. MasterCard still had memory trend line support. No resistance was there. Visa memory trend line support, the green trend lines were there. There was no resistance trend line, whereas American Express was inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory and support memory. Therefore, in the daily charts also, we could see AXP was weaker. It was still inside a triangle pattern. If you were going to take a bearish trade in AXP, how could you take it? You could take it using short call vertical again, because it was inside the triangle, it didn't break the triangle yet. You might not want to take a straight put trade, using simple port, you might use short call vertical. I took that trade and let's look at the stock today. I could take the short trade when price was inside the triangle pattern. I use short call vertical, very straight. And today it is very nicely breaking below the triangle pattern. It moved sideways for a while. And because it is now breaking below support, the time decay helped me because I had a short call vertical position. Again, this trade ended with a profit. All I did was a very disciplined analysis of three related stocks, all of which looked weak at or near very top and I could short the weakest of them. This one I posted 22 days ago and again this trade turned out to be profitable.
I shared one analysis today. Let's have a look at that. That was on Nike. This one. I shared it just before market open today. In the weekly chart, the backdrop candle color is still bullish cyan. However, at the right edge, the candle shape is bearish. It has a long upper tail. In the daily chart, this gap up was associated with earnings. It went up sharply. In fact, on the gap up day, I could take a very profitable gap short day trade. I had shared it in Twitter at that time using live data that ended out, that ended as a very profitable day trade. After that price went up and I saw as of yesterday's market close, it displayed a very scheduled possible reversal signal, a unique signal that comes at or near the very top for very scheduled and it may come at or near the very bottom for bullish headwind. And they may lead to very lucrative trade setups as we could see from the previous bullish headwind or the bearish headwind before that. Now it displayed a bearish headwind again at the very top. If you applied the unambiguous checklist associated with bearish headwind trade setup, short trade setup, then you would see that all the checklist conditions, both in daily and weekly were met. Therefore, as of yesterday's market close, it gave a short setup. How it will work out, I don't know, but I know that it has given me a low risk shorting opportunity. I looked at the industry also. Industry as of yesterday's close was relatively strong. However, we need to look into it more carefully. Yesterday, only several, seven industries were up, 139 were down. Though relatively footwear was stronger, it was still down yesterday. Therefore, I found a stock giving a reversal trend at the very top. And that is in sync with the fact that the industry was stronger earlier. I expect the stocks to be at or near very high, which was true in case of Nike. So the industry allowed me to short. It was starting to go down after prolonged strength. Why I say it was starting to go down? Because I could see that from the deceleration in the base column. That was in sync, the industry going down from the top and the stock going down on the chart from the very top, starting to go down, I think, because the bearish headwind has appeared. They were in sync and I looked at the fundamentals It was overvalued. Earnings growth is positive in the latest quarter. However, the yearly periods has positive, negative, and then again, positive earnings growth. Not fantastic. Only 4.2% earnings growth in the latest year. Because it is overvalued in my technique, I am allowed to short the stock. So I found Nike as a shorting candidate at the very top. And because it is not inside any Pattern, let's look at Nike using live charts. What I mean by pattern, there is no support nearby. The next memory support is far away. I analyzed the bearish short trade setup based on yesterday's data and you can see it is falling nicely because it is not inside a triangle pattern. Unlike AXP, you could take it using simple put options. Volatility was very low. Therefore, put options will be cheap. How do I know volatility was low? I could check that out from the volatility template. In the volatility template, when the candle colors are in magenta or red, then volatility is very low. Therefore, as of yesterday's close, I could buy the put options at a very low price. And today it has dropped by 1.6%. The option, put option would have significant profit already. Let's look at the industries today, how they are doing. The market level is weak and you could see that 
now probably people are starting to talk about market being bearish but i started taking bearish trades earlier i did it in weaker industries or weakening industries i took the short trades in fundamentally overvalued stocks or stocks with reducing earnings growth and i took the shots where the charts allowed me to take a short trade i call that 360 degrees analysis and now i am reaping good profit from them let's look at the sector performance today drilling down from the market level this is using real data real time data if i click the streaming button play button on then streaming is on it is again connecting with definitive zenith and it will update the data sometimes to save bandwidth i pause the streaming you can see when i ran it just before the webinar all the sectors were down zero was up all the 11 sectors were down and the magenta color bar show that they were down over five day period also that is previous five days only one sector was up then were down so the sector level is also bearish the server side data comes from zenith i have to pause and play again while it is doing that i wanted to highlight one more thing from the market etfs as i mentioned earlier during market hours i keep an eye on the market etfs for usa market it is iwm dia qqq spy using 5 or 10 minute charts using fine tune template or precise entry template i can change it to the daily template and i would like to point out few things to you in IWM I am already bearish from the very top of this move using the memory resistance line because it was the weakest of the four ETFs I prefer to take short trades in IWM those are working out very well now you can see in the daily charts dia is at support qqq is at support spy is breaking below support if qqq and dia also breaks below support you have to be even more careful for swing trading purpose it is already bearish but if this memory supports are broken for longer term investors also you may start managing your trades another thing i wanted to point out this band indicators are very useful they show us what is going on dia was showing that it was a pendulum or price extreme high same was true for qqq and same was true for spy iwm was weaker than others therefore it was not at price extreme high however then it gave us a reversal candle this dot shows it was a reversal candle price tried to go up but then sharply fell down now if you look at dia here is a reversal candle and here is a reversal candle in qqq three reversal two, two reversal candles again this one and this one and in spy three reversal candles one two three when price is at price extreme or pendulum high and you keep seeing only bearish reversals the reversals come in red color if there are bearish there are bearish reversals if at price extreme high you keep seeing only bearish reversals not bullish reversals that is not a good sign therefore you can see the market weakness from many different angles if i went back to a xp sorry nike again you can see i use that bearish signal for nike also at the very top it displayed a bearish reversal at price extreme high and similar bearish signals are appearing in all the market etfs let's go back to the sector analysis yes it has updated the data now and you can see using live data all the sectors are down let's go to the sector scorecard and heat map all are down which one 
are the weakest consumer discretionary industrial communication services all are down but therefore you may not look for any long trade which ones are relatively stronger real estate healthcare utilities all defensive sectors but because the market is bearish you are better off taking short trades and those would be in communication services industrials consumer discretionary or you could use the base columns you could look for short trades in consumer staples also communication services consumer discretionary again so when i combine deceleration and weakness i can see consumer discretionary today is the weakest and also the most decelerating that is where i would like to focus for taking short trades and i am going to focus only on short trades because the market is bearish sectors are also bearish so let me drill down to the consumer discretionary industries and see which of them are weakest i can simply double click you can see only three industries are up among the consumer discretionary industries all are down but i am going to focus on the worst performers so let's say this you may further drill down into those industry stocks because the industries were stronger earlier you may look for overvalued stocks and which are going down today these are the stocks all are going down let's look at the stocks that are going down by more than 1% i am going to change the technical trading system to qla get the symbols to trade station that is qla and let's look at these stocks one by one see if there is any trade setup what i am doing i first looked at the market it was looking bearish i looked at the sectors all were down i identified consumer discretionary as the weakest sector with most deceleration i went into the consumer discretionary industries found the weakest industries then looked for overvalued stocks that are dropping today by more than 1% aptv instantly you can see that it is giving a breakout short candidate if you are going to take this breakout trade you may not want to put stop far above you may put stop just be above today's high because today was a gap down open when there is a gap down open and you are taking a short trade you may put stop for swing trading just above the day's high and when could you take the short trade you could in fact initiate the short trade right when it was breaking below this memory support you would already be in profit and you already covered more than the risk distance this is your profit so far this was your stop loss distance so you already covered risk distance you could make sure that the trade ends with profit let me look at few more of these stocks five five is also going down you could take a short trade using the trend fall and go with flow short trade setup in that case you would put stop just above this price point around 130 let's look at mat i'm looking at the stocks that are down most using this highlighted red color under the percentage change column from previous day here also you have a breakout trade setup in mat metal toy making company you could take it as a breakout trade here what about olli this is already down a lot i'm not going to look for a short trade you could see probably where i could look for a short trade this was the point to take a short trade using the go with flow trend following short trade setup let's look at under armor uaa here also it is breaking down but the weekly is neutral we already saw other stocks that are also breaking down below memory support but weekly is magenta so i would rather short those stocks than ua let me look at one last stock vsto vista outdoors here also i can see the weekly is bullish color so i am not going to short it what could i short today aptv just as it was breaking below the trend line support 
five also could be shorted as a trend following short trade setup and metal as a breakout trade setup you can probably find many more shorting opportunities in the market today you may be better off avoiding taking long trades that is how whatever be the market condition you can not only take low risk high probability trades using the 360 degrees analysis but you can take them confidently and often before others before the media starts to talk about market being bearish or bullish let me end today's session here i am going to travel for a couple of weeks i am not sure if i will have access to high speed internet during the travel if i have i will set up next wednesday's webinar and send email to all of you through the traders forum i will make the weekly market roundup video that doesn't need much bandwidth because it is not a live webinar in either case i look forward to seeing you in my next session thank you for joining you have a great week and trade profitably